workshop. Welcome, Mr. Genazzo, Ms. Marotti. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Okay, so um, good evening and, and thank you. Hi, Jared, how are you? Good to see you. Um, so we were asked here tonight to present um, regarding our upcoming manufacturing program that we're putting together. Um, for those of you who have not met our assistant principal, I know she's introduced herself to many of you, but this is our new assistant principal, Amy Ferrati. She comes to us uh, last May and has spent several days over the summer um, acclimating herself to, to our school community and really taking the initiative with this manufacturing program. So um, we're going to spend the next you know, 20 or so minutes talking about the, the vision for the manufacturing program here. Um, I'm going to turn the, the presentation over to Ms. Ferrati and I will um, interject when it's appropriate. But again, as the project lead for, um, from, for this program, I'm going to turn it over to her and allow her to, to um, give you some information about where we're going. Thank you. So thank you all for having me come out today. I'm really passionate about the work that East Haven is implementing here at the high school. Um, and I was really excited that I became the lead on this, this uh, project. So first of all, um, I've, when I took on this role, I actually had to go and look up, okay, what exactly is manufacturing? Because in my mind, I picture a lot of different things. So we're talking about manufacturing here in Connecticut, the businesses that we're going to be hopefully partnering with. What does it actually mean? So it's you take a raw piece of material. And so most of the time, we're looking at a piece of a block of aluminum. And we're creating a new product. So here's um, an example right here is they took that block of aluminum and they're making that horse out of it using one of the machines that we're hoping to purchase here at East Haven High School. Another example, and this we actually saw firsthand when we did a site visit to Platt Tech, is they took a solid block of aluminum um, and they made really unique chess pieces and all an entire chess board. And so um, it really uh, piqued my interest because I think these are things that kids can, can really, um, it's a, um, sorry, they can do um, physically, they can use their hands, it's a kinesthetic model. Um, and so kids can get really involved in the manufacturing process. So here, um, I'm gonna show you an example of a video of one of the machines that we're looking to buy. And in this example, the machine is actually making a chess piece out of a piece of aluminum. Now you can see it actually come to shape, and then that last bit comes off, and it becomes one of the rooks, if I'm correct. If I'm any chess players out there, right, it was a rook. So that's something that the kids will be able to hopefully make here at East Haven High School as one of their projects. Um, and I was questioning, okay, why manufacturing? Why are we gonna push manufacturing onto the students? Is there any jobs for them? What's the job outlook? So I looked at the department, the, now mind you, all of these stats, this is just for Connecticut. This is not a nationwide, global. All these stats I'm about to present to you are just here in Connecticut. So um, if you look, the overall trend since 1990 is we've had a very, very large decrease of manufacturing jobs here in Connecticut alone. Um, in 1990, you had over 300,000, and now currently in 2021, we are just below 150. And obviously, you see in 2020, there was a dip there due to the um, COVID virus. So then I looked, in 1999, we currently had 300,000 manufacturing jobs here in Connecticut alone. Then in 2012, that number dropped to 150. And so the question is why? Why did we have such a drop in our employment of manufacturing jobs in Connecticut? So back in 1990, a lot of, company real, a lot of companies realized it was a lot cheaper to make their products if we outsourced them to other, company, to other countries. So we outsourced them to India and China, where we didn't have to pay um, the workers as much as you would in, in Connecticut. But then we started to see these jobs coming back into Connecticut. And that was because those countries were no longer as cheap as they once were for um, workers. You know, people in China, um, they started getting mortgages and cars, and that meant they needed a higher um, wage every day. So it wasn't as um, cost, it uh, wasn't as um, 
it wasn't beneficial to the companies any longer to outsource those jobs. So they came back into Connecticut. And Connecticut companies also started using different techniques. And one of them is called lean manufacturing. And it's this idea of in the workforce, there's no waste and there's organization. So when everything is organized and you have very minimal waste, you're gonna save a lot of money. Um, so it made it much more profitable for companies to come back and use the workforce here in Connecticut for their manufacturing jobs. In 1996, um, the workforce 55 plus for manufacturing jobs in Connecticut was at 18%. And in 2018, we see that this is now 35%. So we have another problem in the manufacturing indra, um, in manufacturing companies is that we have an aging workforce. We have not a lot of young people entering the field, but we have a lot of people who are looking soon to exit the field. So we have this gap and we have the need to fill it right here in Connecticut. And then currently, as of today, we need 6,000 manufacturing jobs in Connecticut alone. So that means that our students here at East Haven High School, they're gonna leave with a new skill and they can actually go into the workforce immediately and make a really decent earning. So what does this mean for our community? So first of all, we're gonna focus on our students. We wanna prepare them for college and careers. We're gonna have, the students are gonna gain job skills that they can find a job immediately after they leave um, the doors of East Haven High School. And they're also going to have skills that's going to help them in college majors, um, anything in the STEM field. So any en future engineer student that we have here at East Haven High School, they're also going to benefit from taking a manufacturing course with us as well. And then we looked at outside of the walls of the high school and we said, well, how could this actually benefit our entire community? And so we saw, we, we met with local businesses um, and we listened to what their concerns were, and we thought, well, we might be able to help you by training the students here at East Haven High School to, for the jobs that you currently have. Um, and so it's not only gonna benefit students and what their future is, but it's also gonna benefit our community members. And we're also looking to partner with different community colleges to come into, and they can actually offer adult education courses as well. So now we have a roadmap, and we looked at where did this process start, and then where are we today? And Vinny's actually going to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. So thank you. So so um, Amy did a great job talking about the the what the what what manufacturing is, and now we're going to talk about how we kind of got there. So back in the winter of of last year, we actually received and the superintendent received a phone call from State Senator Chicarella, who up at the at the at the Capitol had had been connected with some lobbyists and some. Um, some um, individuals in the manufacturing field. And one of them was a gentleman named Jamison Scott, who was the president of Manufacture CET at the time. He no longer is. And uh, they asked if we could have a sit down for a meeting. So we did, and we talked about what manufacturing looks like in Connecticut. Those 6,000 jobs that Ms. Ferrati mentioned, um, only 3,000 per year are being filled in the state of Connecticut. So there are 3,000 unfilled manufacturing jobs in a Connecticut per year. What does that mean for our students? So. We, we, set, we had that sit down back in, in the winter, started to have some internal conversations. Um, in the spring of last year, we met with Goodwin College, their representative, Matt Dodona. Um, we with, met with representatives from Haas, which is one of the, um, the, the major um, industry uh, uh, machinists that, with, with respect to the CNC machines that you saw in, in, the, in the video. Back in June, we met with Mayor Kafora and um, Ray Baldwin from the town who had an opportunity to meet with us and discuss what impact this manufacturing program can have on the town of East Haven. And back in July, Mr. Hennessy was gracious enough to host at his, um, at his um, uh, business location, Mr. Baldwin, myself, the mayor, Ms. Ferrati, uh, and several businesses in town where they gave us some really valuable feedback with respect to what some of the issues they find relative to hiring good employable both adults and anybody over the 18 uh, age of 18 and um, we had a real great conversation about how this can not just impact our students here at East Haven High School but how it can impact the greater East Haven community at large so we had a really great meeting which led to again bringing in some um, some reps the goal for us this year is throughout the next several months 
purchase the machinery and do some of the, the, the groundwork. The, the, the goal is that by winter of 2021 or December-ish, we'll have our staff trained, we'll have our curriculum in place, we'll continue to communicate to East Haven businesses, we'll communicate to East Haven families, communicate to East Haven students what the benefit of this program is. I think there's a misnomer that this is for students who are not college bound. That's not the case at all. It's for both students who are college bound and in a college track and also students who might not know what their path is relative to where they want to go after East Haven High School. Um, so um, that's, that's where the, the, the kind of the vision is for us to be this winter with the January of our installation of machines down in our shop downstairs. We're retrofitting a space right now, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And then uh, our, our students sitting in seats, having an opportunity to take the courses that we're offering in semester two of this year, which begins in February. So that's kind of the, the, the roadmap of how this started. It's been a complete community effort with respect to our elected officials. Our board has been very supportive. Obviously our superintendent's office supportive. That's the roadmap of where we started, where we're going. And I think the, the opportunities are really endless after we really get this thing off the ground. We had some really great visits in that kind of roadmap. Um, we had great calls with Lyman Hall High School in Wallingford and their, uh, their leaders of their programs. We had a great visit to Platt Tech last week and, and a week and a half ago, they came out to see our space. Um, so we're really getting some great guidance with respect to where we want to go. So uh, Ms. Friday, take it back over. So what does it look like at East Haven High School? So this manufacturing program is not just going to be something that lives at East Haven High School that's just going to be focused just on a certain um, population of students. We're looking for it to really encompass more than that. So we're looking for community partnerships. We're looking for places where we can send our students for internship opportunities. We're also looking at every student who walks the halls here in East Haven High School. We're looking for the student who wants to go to college, and we're also looking for the student who is not college bound, but is, will be career ready once they leave East Haven High School. So we started talking to a couple community colleges. Um, we were talking to Goodwin. We also um, are in the works of um, talking to Gateway Community College because they have been trying for years now to get a manufacturing program up and running at Gateway. And then we also um, are talking to Housatonic Community College. So that means for our students that there's a possibility for them to earn college credit while they are taking one of our courses here at the high school. We're also collaborating with local businesses and industry members. So we're looking for internship, workforce experiences, and also the skills and knowledge necessary for the work in the industry. Um, we had a meeting, uh, I want to say it was back in July, where we brought um, community businesses here to our high school and we sh walked them around and we showed them the work that we were doing here with all of our, Connecticut, our, our career and technical education courses. And one of the things that I'm most excited about is I want to know from the people in industry what skills should our students know when they walk out the door. So believe it or not, I am not a carpenter. I cannot build a house. Um, I can, I'm pretty, pretty good with IKEA furniture. I think that's the extent of my knowledge. But so that means down in the, in the wood shop, I don't really know the skills that one student might need in order to go work for a construction company. And so we've made those connections now with local businesses and they can tell me, okay, I want my future employees to know A, B, and C. And so we can help build that into the curriculums here at East Haven High School. And so we wanna continue that, um, that conversation with the businesses because we wanna make sure that our students are the, going to be the best ones to be employed with any East Haven company. And then we had to work on identifying which courses we were going to offer here at East Haven. So we're hoping to start with Manufacturing 101 come um, late January, early February. Um, they're going to be introduced to, um, to concepts of production, logistics, and inventory controls and the relationships of the local global economy. Um, there's also going to be a course eventually on the principles of manufacturing math. So that is a great course because a lot of times students struggle in a typical math class because they can't, they're having difficulty applying it or understanding, okay, what does this actually mean in my life? Whereas this course here, it's real world application of math. So they're going to use the math to program the machine to create the item. Then we also have CNC machining. 
Um, CNC stands for Computer Numeric Control, so you're using a computer to control um, the actual machine, so that goes into um, you know, coding of the machine and telling it you know, which direction to turn and when. Metrology and calibration. Um, this one I think I am most excited about. I was told by um, our connection with Plot Tech that this one is um, where he finds most women excel um, rather than the male students and it's because we have an eye for detail and I couldn't agree more. <laughs> So that is actually the scientific study of measurement. So when you're putting a, a, a piece um, that you've made in the machine onto an airplane that you know I'm taking down to Florida next April, I want to know that that bolt that was created is made perfectly. I don't want it to be off by even a hair. So that's what metrology is. It's making sure that everything that's created with these machines, they go through a process where they are checked and double checked and they use large microscopes to make sure that everything is cut perfectly so that the wing of the airplane does not fall off as I'm heading down to Florida. Students will also use CAD and CAM machines. So that's um, software that they'll be using in order to use um, the machines that we're hoping to purchase. And then finally, lean manufacturing. This was brand new um, that I just learned about recently when we visited Platt Tech. And this um, introduces students to the philosophical background um, and the history of the concepts of lean manufacturing. And this is where everything gets organized. There is no waste so that we make sure that we're doing everything the most efficient way. So our space and equipment. So we reached out to Goodwin College, who came in a few times now. We also talked to um, the representative from Haas, and they looked at the space um, downstairs, and they gave us a lot of recommendations, and we're now we're in the process of changing that space over to our manufacturing area. Um, we also got feedback from local businesses when they came out to visit us as well as what their suggestions were. Um, a couple weeks ago we went to visit Platt Tech um, High School in Milford. They're building a brand new facility but we were touring the older one um, and we just looked at their setup and one of the things we took away from there is we liked how they had the machines around the perimeter and then the inside was like a horseshoe of a workbench so that this, no matter where the students were working the teacher can see them either working on the workbench on the computers or on the machines and we don't have separate rooms so that was something we took away from that visit. Um, we're going to remove the carpet downstairs, which actually happened today, so that was very exciting. And then we'll epoxy the floors. We have to install phase three power and also compressed air. So machines. Now, when they first throwing, started throwing out the names of these machines, I literally had no idea what they did. So I went to my trusty friend Google, and I looked them up. I watched videos to understand what it was that they do. So these are the three machines that we're looking to purchase. We have the mini mill, um, the tool mill machine, and also the desktop mill. They all do um, things a little bit differently, and we're hoping that the students will be able to understand all three of them after they've gone through the program here at East Haven High School. Now finally, uh, Mr. Donazzo is going to talk about well, how does this relate to the vision of the graduate here for East Haven High School. Thank you. And thank you, Amy, for that. I also want to also thank, and I, I failed to do so before, I apologize, Bob. Um, Bob Swan was really instrumental in setting us up with Dave Tuttle over at Platt Tech. Bob was, uh, spent part of his career at Platt Tech um, at, like several decades ago, right, Bob? Um, so, um, but uh, he spent some of his time over there and he was really instrumental in setting us up with Platt Tech. And Randall Osborne as well, who's been a really um, great resource for us because, again, uh, many of the machinery that we're looking at talks about coding and, and a lot of things that are going to tie directly into our technology uh, infrastructure here. So I want to thank Bob and Randall as well. I also want to thank RJ who's been there with us uh, as every step of the way with respect to uh, you know, how this from an operational standpoint would fit into our school and of course Erica and Jen from their endless support with respect to making this work here at East Haven High School. So kind of wrapping this up. This is, this is really innovative and it's really exciting work that we're doing here. We're really um, kind of thrilled with the opportunity that our students will be able to have once, they, once we get this machinery in front of them and our, our instructors trained on how to, how to teach the 
uh, the, the use of the machines and really dive into the curriculum. We're excited about the partnerships and the things that that could open doors for our students down the road, whether it be through community internships and or college uh, opportunities or post-secondary opportunities. Where does this tie in ultimately for us as a school community? Well, it ties directly to our vision of the graduate. And I passed out a one-page kind of executive summary of what our vision of the graduate is. And we haven't really spent a whole lot of time talking about that yet, but it's work that we're continuing to do on a you know, kind of daily basis. We spent a lot of time last, last school year in the evenings with you know, a, a subcommittee of, of uh, staff members that have really worked to identify what are five attributes of our vision of the graduate. This is what we want our students to be able to do. These are the key attributes that we want our students to have when they leave our school system in 12th grade. And this is a kindergarten through 12th grade continuum. We want them to be responsible citizens. And when we heard feedback from the businesses uh, that we went out and visited and came to us, one of the things they talked about was, again, the challenge that they have to find good, employable individuals who are willing to show up, willing to work, come to work every day, have a great positive attitude, contribute to the workforce, and ultimately, if you look at kind of the, the skills under that attribute of responsible citizen, that's what it's talking about. Knowing your role with respect to being part of an organization. Two, goal-directed and resilient. We want our students to have, obviously, goals that they establish for themselves when they come to high school and they see that we have this manufacturing program that, that could ultimately lead them to a career opportunity or post-secondary opportunity. Um, and to understand that it's hard, and when it's hard, you gotta be a resilient individual. You have to be able to overcome the obstacles that are confronted with you. Um, to be an informed thinker, to think critically, um, which, again, when you look at some of the work that is done here, work that when we went and visited Dave Tuttle over at, um, at Platt Tech, there was things that this individual for 23 years in the industry as a teacher and prior to that where he worked at Sikorsky, this is more than just putting your hands on a machine and pressing a button and making it work and, and using a manual mill and grinding it. It's thinking, it's problem solving. It's um, understanding how that, you know, that, uh, product that you're creating has a specific role in something larger that's part of something bigger. Um, again, solving problems, being willing to and finding solutions to the creative things that we're having difficulties with. There's a lot of collaboration that is required in these, uh, in these shops. This is not a single operation where a student is sitting behind a computer and then just goes to a, to a machine and does his work and then moves on to the next one. There's often group uh, projects that are engaging our students. And then lastly, being a powerful and effective communicator, being willing to show up uh, and, and voice concerns or ideas, um, being willing to accept feedback. This is all part of, an, you know, part of being an, an effective communicator, listening. So ultimately, the things that we're talking about in this program and the things that we're looking to accomplish as a school community and as, as a school in general are where we think this manufacturing program is going to take our school and, and really provide opportunities for our students that we don't offer at this moment. And um, it's another avenue. It's something that we're really excited about. I really want to thank Amy and the work that she's done since she got here. And again, everybody who's at the table today for the work that they're doing to make sure that this is something that becomes a reality for our kids and our school community and ultimately is something that's going to benefit us as we, uh, as we move forward. We would be one of just a few schools in, in our area, but in the state of Connecticut, that, that have a program that are not a specialty school like Platt Tech. Um, the Morgan School in Clinton is creating their own manufacturing program now. Lyman Hall and Wallingford, Derby, and Hamden are the, the most uh, area schools that have programs such as this. We want to retain our students in district. We don't want our students going to Platt Tech. We want them coming here to provide um, further um, growth to our school community. So if we can build programs that set us apart, we're hope is that we, we retain our students in district. So uh, at this point, I think the next slide, ask if there's anybody has any individual questions um, for myself or Amy. Mr. Stacy. Yeah, I think this is a, you know, a great idea and, and hopefully it comes to fruition and we do it. My only question was, is there any way or have you thought about incorporating adult ed with this? Are they, can they benefit in So we way? have, by partnering with one of the community colleges, that's one of um, the avenues we're looking to take is that we would become possibly a satellite school for the community college that we partner with and they can offer night classes to um, adults in the community as well. Okay, thank you. Welcome. 
Yes. Yeah, so um, I think part of the conversation we're going to have tonight is, is the equipment that we need and the lead time that it's going to take to get that equipment here. It's about 19 weeks out or so for much of the equipment. So 19 weeks from now puts us pretty much the start of January. Um, obviously, kids aren't going to be pushing buttons on machines on you know day one of semester two. There's a lot of theory that they have to learn first. Um, so we're confident that if we get the machinery and the equipment ordered, the space is already being retrofitted, that um, we'll be prepared to put kids in seats in, in semester two. So Bob just reminded me the Plat Tech, the Plat Tech kids, again, they, they're, they're there all day from seven o'clock to two o'clock as part of their, their program offerings, but they're actually making a piece for one of the NASA space shuttles that's going up. So they're doing some really amazing work over there and they partner with Sikorsky. So um, again, that partnership, those types of partnerships are what we're looking to create here. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so you're going to see uh, purchase orders. There's two purchase orders, two invoices. One's for last fiscal year that we still have open POs for, and open POs over 7,000 for our projects. And then you're going to have current year purchase orders over 7,000 and invoices in the amount of 331,556 and 84 cents. Um, does anybody have any questions with those that were provided? A lot of our larger POs, over 7,000, are setting up blanket POs for the current year. Uh, many are for our special education tuition, our transportation for the year, and our special education out of district transportation, um, setting those up for the current school year starting next week. And our largest payment you will see is for $72,200, and that is for our progress payment for the construction taking place in the library to your left and to your right. We are probably 75% done with that progress with the project. Um, the next piece will be installing the glass between the pillars, um, which will take place once it's ordered. With COVID, everything seems to be back ordered. So um, we're hoping for a four to six weeks turnaround for the remainder of that project. Yeah. Any questions? No. Any questions? Not for me. Um, the next thing you will see is the health insurance report. Um, the summary states that um, our income was a little over a million dollars. Our expense was 239000 We came to net income for the month of 804864 um, I would just like to note of that income, we, we drew down two months of income of payments for July and August in July for the summer payments from the town. So um, about 400000 of that is related to August. So the in, our the net income for the month of 8804 is inflated by one month's worth of activity. Questions? No. Okay, so um, moving on to finance discussions, the first on the topic is the Rotary T sponsorship. Um, in the past, the Board of Ed has taken out a T sponsor of $100. Um, we are looking to pursue that avenue again for $100 and I believe that will, it is for the great golf ball drop and we will have uh, a T sign displayed at, at that event if, if approved for $100. Yes. Because, ooh, See? just because um, this year they're not doing the Anjanette Wars, and that's, um, no, because of COVID. Um, so that's their primary fundraiser for Clothe the Children, which is the, which goes right back to our district. So 
So they're not planning on doing it in April? No, this Again? is going to be the primary, this is the primary fundraiser for the Rotary this year, which will fund Clothe the Children. Then in, in, yeah. in light of that, we can, we can do the 250. We do an Eagle or a Birdie sponsorship because a lot of what the Rotary raises comes back to our students in a variety of ways, either through Clothe the Children or the monthly student recognition. Where scholarships students are monthly. Giving scholarships monthly. Um, so thank you for bringing that to our attention. Mm -hmm. And I will miss tasting all those on Jeanette. I know. We're hoping for next year, but, you know, I, just in light of COVID and everything that's if happening. If I could I add, both of those sponsors, whatever you guys choose on a dollar amount, come with balls for the drop. I'll just put out there that we will not, we will deny the entry, so, so no one's I winning So I could tell cash. you that um, what the animal shelter has done, um, all, they... The balls that went in, they put in the, um, so it would say like um, East Haven School District. If that ball did win, the prize did go to a charity of their choice. Awesome. So that's what they had. So um, if our ball comes out, we can put it back to scholarships for our students if we absolutely, choose. Absolutely, yeah. Awesome. So that's what they had asked for, um, like for the animal shelter. They had asked that if the ball that came with their sponsorship won, that that would be put back to a charity of the Rotary's choice or the animal shelter's choice. So Awesome. So we can, I think that's up for discussion in regular meeting. We can choose on a price at that point when it's brought forth to a vote. Thank you. The next item is REITs Across America. Um, so REITs Across America, I can give you a little background. So I am in a different world. I am the director of East Lawn Cemetery. So I am on the back end of this in coordination of REITs Across America. It is a great event. So East Lawn was selected to be one of the visiting cemeteries for uh, Reese Across America this, to this year. Um, it is a great honor to be selected. East Lawn has willingly um, given up their cemetery and Green Lawn Cemetery for their veterans. We are, d d um, the Lions Club is taking the lead on Reese Across America and they're looking for sponsorships to pay for all of the wreaths that will be laid on all the veterans' graves. Um, in your packet, you will see the corporate sponsorship form. Um, the, the lowest level is the insign, which is equal to 10 reads for $150. I think that would be my recommendation for the Board of Ed to do. Or if you want to go higher, we could go higher. That's, that's your choice. Um, just to know, we are also going to have East Haven participation in, in this event once we get dates on when reads will be delivered. Um, we will be in contact with school bands to make sure our students are there with, with uh, the band and flags and welcoming the tractor trailer when it comes down by, by the green. Um, we want to make sure this is a great town event and we're going to have our students represented properly there. So any donation that you guys find fitting, I am in agreement with. We're also partnering with them to create opportunities for our students to um, volunteer as part of this effort in honoring our, our veterans. As, um, again, wearing a different hat as chairman of the East Haven Veterans Council, um, and just to jump on what RJ said, this is really an honor to have been selected um, to have this take place here. Kudos to Wendy Belmore, who's the Honored Veteran of the Year, and the work that she's put into this. Um, and Erica, what you're talking about, and, um, they're going to need volunteers. I think the date is December 18th. Yes, correct. Correct. Yeah. So apparently last year at one of the the places, um, it snowed, and they had no idea what grave. So we need people to go out and mark. I think there's 1,100 uh, veteran graves between the two cemeteries somewhere in that in that neighborhood. Yeah, I think it's close to 12. Wow. Yeah. So wow. also, any individual can buy purchase a wreath and um, you know place it. You can take it outside of East Lawn and, uh, you, you know, if you have a St. Lawrence or a, any of the other, if you have a family member, you can do that too. It help the cost. But it's a great, it's a great honor for East Haven. Absolutely. And I think just, um, just trying to get the students into the community and letting us partner with them, I think at minimum we should be a major, um, as a major sponsor. So when it comes to the discussion portion, I think that's something that we should be doing especially if we're going to be having our students uh, collaborating and working with the veterans and, you know, displaying the wreaths. I think we should, you know, if we're going to show our, you know, our East Haven pride and stuff that we should, we should show. So. Okay. Very good. Okay. Any questions with the two donations? No. So moving on is the manufacturing bid requirements. So you, you all saw the presentation that uh, Ms. Ferrati and Mr. Denuzzo gave uh, earlier this evening and 
what we're looking to do is the manufacturing program is going to be funded by one of the ESSER grants. We set aside this money knowing it was going to enhance our curriculum and better achieve for our student academic growth. With that being said, in these meetings, as they had, I, as they had no, noted, that many of these machines have a 19, 20-week wait period, some 17-week wait period. And in talking to Platt Tech, in talking to Morgan, um, in talking with Good Goodwin, we've all received the same recommendations on our machinery. Um, there is not many manufacturers that you can use for this um, for these pur purchases. There's no ad advantageous way of getting a cheaper price because they all come back. They all go straight to this Haas manufacturer. So what I'm asking for tonight would be a bid requirement to purchase a bid waiver. Excuse me, to take away the three-week wait period on ordering the, the machinery. The machinery comes to about 20, um, I'm sorry, the machinery is $282,000 and the tools and supplies to go with that would be another 20,000. So we're roughly looking at $300,000 worth of machinery. Um, we're asking for the bid waiver so we can order that machinery hopefully by the end of this week in order to get it in-house functioning for a second semester. Um, going out to bid, in my honest opinion, is only going to delay the process where we're only going to have the same answer. It's going to cost us a bit more money to do the legal documentation to go out to bid. I, I believe Haas is the only, there's only one vendor who can give us these mills made for academic scenarios. So um, it's on the agenda tonight. If there's any questions, we can go, if you guys have questions, we can go through that now as well. I have a question. Yeah. So is it legal if we do that, though? Correct. So normally, um, Normally, we don't have to bring grant funding to this level to mm -hmm. the board for board approval. But Again, you know, since I've been here, we've been doing that. Um, I would like to, I'm just letting you guys know that we could go through the normal process. It will add 10 days of going out to bid in the paper on the site, waiting for the next meeting, and it will probably delay um, the, the ordering of those machines enough to possibly put the start time in jeopardy. Vendor that provides them for schools? There is one vendor, Haas, that everybody uses in the state. Gate, Gateway, Housatonic, um, Good, Goodwin, Platt Tech in Milford, the Morgan School who's starting this program, Hamden who's using this program, have all gone with Haas because Haas is what most manufacturers use upon graduation. So when students are in the local manufacturing community, most of these machines are Haas machines, and we feel it's best to give them a machine that they're using in school so when they graduate, they're going to be using a machine that they're familiar with, and we can provide that experience for them here. Okay. And these are as if it's grant, so we don't have yeah. to. Correct. All right. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. no? And to add more to that, there's also a chip shortage. So the Haas representative told us that they're only, they're only making X amount of machines or mills per month, and once they meet the threshold for the number of chips that they have, the, you're getting put to the back burner, which could be two years. Mm -hmm. So we want to get to the front of the list as soon as possible so we can take advantage as of this program. It's legal. Yeah. So. Thank you for that. Yep. Any other questions? No. Okay, so the last piece is the All-American Contract Addendum under Finance Discussions. What we are looking for this evening on your agenda is to vote on um, continuing the sanitation attendance at our elementary schools, middle school, and high school. Um, last year with COVID, we had two sanitation attendants per school for the whole academic day. This year, um, we are only looking to have one sanitation attendant at the school for five hours between the hours of 10 and 3, which is primarily the lunch times to, to walk around and clean the high contact areas around lunch and also give the janitors a chance to keep up with the cleaning of the building and not be bogged down by the extra high surface area clean. And Arthur, just to ask, this is um, in alignment with both um the health department and state's recommendations? Correct. Yes, so DPH and CSDE has, they've advised that the daily standard routine cleaning is sufficient in schools when done well in alignment with your standard, daily standard mm -hmm. cleaning procedures. And um, additional um, cleaning of surfaces like cafeteria tables and bathrooms and desks throughout the day when students are in the building. So you're adding that one extra layer then? During the school day when During students the are in the day. building. Yep. That's good. Yes. Yes. Yep. 
Um, it's I, an allowable expense through the American Rescue Fund grant. And I read that this is um, can be suspended should things get better and whatever. And Correct. So Correct. there's no like, it's not like a, a permanent for one year or anything like that. It can be stopped at any time. Okay, thank yep. you. That's a good question. That's positive. Let's hope so, right? Fingers right. crossed. Fingers crossed is right. Okay. Any questions on that? Good. Okay, so lastly, on the building and grounds updates, I just wanted to provide everybody um, just on an update of what we've been going through over the summer for the buildings and getting everything ready and projects going on as we uh, start on a new school year. So we've had all our carpets replaced with the VCT tiles at Deer Run School. Every classroom has been completed at Deer Run and every classroom has been completed at JMMS. Um, we have also done individual carpet replacements in classrooms to the VCT tiles. We've done two at Mamaguan, and we've done four at Tuttle School. Um, in addition, we have ordered stair treads to replace faulty stair treads at, at Mamaguan School. We have ordered boilers to be replaced at East Haven Academy, Deer Run, and Ferrara. Due to COVID, they are back ordered and will not be received until early, early fall. And we will gauge the replacement of those based on the timing of the year and the weather. If it's going to be cold, we will hold off until the spring, but those have been ordered. Um, the portable classroom roof at Ferrara School has been replaced. Um, we have paved a new, we have created a new parking lot in the back of Deer Run School. This will house 25 to 30 spaces for our staff parking and hopefully we'll take care of the problem on Route 80 in, in the morning um, with staff and parents and buses trying to get through that morning loop. Um, I believe they We've added the spaces, we've resurfaced the play area in, in the back for the kids, and we have also created some sidewalks with pavement around the building. So there is now a full walking circle, which is handicap, um, handicap accessible around the whole perimeter of Deer Run. They are lining that lot today, so they should be ready for tea teachers when they come in on Thursday. Um, we have done HVAC upgrades at JMMS and the East Haven Academy. We have replaced the old blower motors in every classroom. Um, I believe half of them are done, the other half will be done after hours once school begins. At East Haven Academy, we have replaced or installed ductless units in the multi-purpose room. Um, that is used for the cafeteria and their gym gymnasium. We put two six-ton uh, units in there that produce air conditioning in the summer and provide some heat in the winter to alleviate the students for the hot and cold with, that they use for gym and the um, cafeteria. Uh, at Tuttle School, we also installed a multi-split unit in their all-purpose -pur room, which is the gym and cafeteria. That unit is um, rather large and also back-ordered, so that will take place probably closer to the spring time frame. Um, so that takes care of the HVAC upgrades in the academic space. For food service upgrades, we have replaced older coolers, walk-ins. We have received new shelving and racking almost at all schools. Um, there will be new menu signage at all schools included. Um, there will be, I believe, 46-inch TVs uh, placed at all schools and will be manned up by the high school, and that will include posting the menus and any school announcements to the cafeteria for the students. Um, we have purchased a pizza oven at the high school, which should be installed and completely functional within the next month or so. Um, we are in the process of getting state approval for a district food truck, as we spoke of. Um, just going through the final um, boxes to check off, but we should get that approval within the next month and go forward with the purchase of that. We have replaced the kitchen floor at the East Haven Academy in their kitchen space, and we have also um, added air conditioning that was not working for some time in the kitchen at Tuttle School. We put another six-ton air unit in there for heat and air conditioning as well, so that'll be properly climate controlled as well. Um, we restructured our library, which you can see to your left and to your right. We have some office space here and we brought up some our, our Mac lab and that is all to facilitate our CTE and manufacturing program that you saw the presentation on sooner. Everything that was housed down in our basement will get moved, moved up here. We are waiting on glass between the pillars which has been ordered and hopefully will be in here in the next couple of months. Um, we have made progress on the Tuttle School playground. There is a, um, a shortage for that as well. We have a meeting on Friday to talk about that but we're expecting delivery I think on September 17th. That, that's correct. So September 17th, we will get uh, all the playground de delivered to Tuttle School, and hopefully once that's done, um, the installer knows there's a push with school in session. We're hoping to get use of it before it gets too cold for the students. 
We have approved sidewalk improvements at JMMS to continue the, the new sidewalk around the back of the building to the front of the building. Um, the high school, there's some faulty sidewalk and handicap ramps, which we will replace. Overbrook will get a new sidewalk in Mamogwin's Compass and small um, circular area by their habitat, which has been destroyed through salt and their snow blowers, will be replaced. Um, our contractor is working at the town green, so he is pretty busy there. So once he is set there, he will begin working at our, at our schools. Um, we have replaced the wall pads in the gym for safety for our students at Mamogwin, Overbrook, and Tuttle School. All of those should be installed in the next two weeks due to some back orders with supplies. Um, we have East Haven at the high school, the visitor bleachers and the cement pad below the bleachers to ensure there's increased strength for any storm like we had in the past, which blew them away the first time. Um, those have been ordered. Again, there's a steel shortage, so that, that will take place. Um, in, installation has, I made sure we had a guarantee installation before our Thanksgiving game in November. So they are guaranteeing um, first week in November. So I will stick to them on that. Um, in addition, we have um, total fence. We'll be placing a fence at our high school from the track all the way to Deer Run for security issues. We have many people who like to ride their dirt bikes and bring their dogs in the field and do some damage and leave and pretty costly expenses. So we're gonna be placing a fence from the high school track down to Deer Run and it's gonna be locked off until the public. Um, our coaches will have access and our all our teams will have the same access. It'll just be blocked off to the pub public on, on off hours. Um, what else? And then normal, no, the normal stuff for general maintenance, we have painting, plumbing, HVAC that's been done. Our floors have all been waxed and are ready to go. Landscaping has been up upgraded. Um, Eric and I have done some walkthroughs yesterday and we're gonna do the rest tomorrow and our schools look in tip top shape, ready to go for the next school year. That was a lot. Sorry. Huge, Just gonna, huge testament you. to RJ and his leadership, as well as Vinny Consiglio and his crew, and Lance at All American and his crew. They work really well together, and as you heard, they've accomplished an incredible amount of busy summer, <laughs> new uh, and replacement and repair maintenance. Um, so thank you for that overview, RJ. RJ, um, the fencing has also been completed at Deer Run. Deer Run, There's correct. So, and privacy screen. So there was a, like a three-section piece of fencing that was not completed at Deer Run when the, when the playground was installed due to some stumps in the, in the way. Oh, yeah. Um, the town has since removed those stumps. That fencing has been installed. We're putting this privacy screen up. Hopefully it's up today. So we are completely done. The neighbors are now happy. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Any questions? No. Okay. Great job, RJ. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call for a motion to adjourn the finance subcommittee meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. I'll also order this evening's meeting, and let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So at this time, Melissa, um, roll call attendance. And if you could let me know, are any members joining virtually this evening? No. Okay. So then we do not need to do a roll call vote this evening. We can do an I vote on certain items. Um, so go ahead and do a roll call attendance, please. Tia De Palma Here. Jennifer DeLongo. Lisa Geraci Anastasio. Tom Hennessy. Tom Murtaugh. Mary Ann Pellegrino. Here. Erica Santiago. Here. Jack Stacy. Here. And Michelle DeLucia. Here. Okay. So as for my report this evening, I just want to remind the board members about convocation on Monday, if you can make it. Can we get the time of that? I'm sorry. 8.30, Erica, convocation 8.30 on Monday. Convocation begins at 8.30. You're welcome to join us in the foyer um, between 7.40 and 8.20 for some coffee and conversation. Okay. And um, since our last meeting, we have had some guidance from the state so there will be a mask policy in place till 
at least September 30th in the school buildings. And I'd also like to take a, a moment to acknowledge and thank board Ma member Marianne Pellegrino for her years of service on the board. Marianne, you will be missed. Unfortunately, Marianne will be resigning due to moving to a neighboring town. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you. Definitely going to be missed. Very much. My little ray of sunshine. Okay. So at this time, um, correspondence. Do we have any new correspondence? There was one loaded to the drive. Just, and that's nothing new? Since? Just one. Okay. Just the one correspondence that everyone can view on the drive. Um, at this time, I'll ask for subcommittee reports. Um, personnel? Okay, so we do have some contracts coming up. Got to be Mike, can't hear you. Okay, I think it's on. Hello? Yep. So we have some contracts um, to approve, um, some hires and rehires and resignations, and um, we're looking to get back into negotiations with the custodians. There was a problem, but we'll soon be back. Not with the negotiations, personal problems with someone. Scheduling. Scheduling, yes. Thank you. And I will ask policy. Uh, nothing for policy just yet and community outreach. Um, I don't believe there's anything, but tonight we will see a few things coming for Wreaths Across America and some collaboration with the Rotary Club, so. Two excellent opportunities for the district. Absolutely. Jack, athletics. Yes, I'm happy to announce that all coaching positions are filled. Um, you'll notice tonight, Glad to announce that Mr. Rick Narachi has will be up for cross country, both boys and girls. It's a mixed group. Um, all the coaches have met with Mr. Bertram, the athletic director. They all understand what policies are to be uh, followed. They're doing pre-checks at practices, checking on uh, temperatures to make sure for COVID, and they're following the state regulations. Um, I think that oh. Sad note, and, and I've got to investigate this further, it appears that the Yellow Jacket Club is disbanding. So oh. we'll have to find out what that's about and uh, if there's some way to put together another parent group, but we'll look into that. That's unfortunate. I believe they do have information on that, correct? Yes. Do you want to share it? So um, in January, we received a letter from the state notifying us that the Yellow Jacket Club had failed to file proper pa paperwork with the Secretary of State and that it was um, no longer recognized as an entity by the state of Connecticut. Um, but I believe before me coming on board, the process had been started to transfer the funds from the Yellow Jacket Club due to not being an entity over to the student activity funds at the finance department where it would follow. Each team would have their own individual account. Um, and follow the same rules of purchase orders and purchasing policies as the Board of Edwood. Um, I believe Mr. Mr. Den uh, Mr. Denozzo and his team would like to start another booster club just under the sanctions of the East Haven Board of Ed, uh, East Haven Board of Ed following the rules of the fiscal policies here. Thank you. We can talk further if you'd like. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are really excited to welcome our staff back on Thursday. They'll engage in three day, uh, two days of PD and then participate in convocation on Monday. And we are also super excited to welcome our students back on Tuesday uh, and doing some walkthroughs with RJ and Vinny and our principals through the, through the schools. We are ready and very excited for what we think is going to be a great school year. Our theme this year is skillfully sailing into 2021-2022. We learned an incredible amount last year as we navigated the challenging pandemic waters. And we're gonna use all that knowledge to make sure we have a combination of mitigation strategies that keep our staff and our students healthy and safe while ensuring that we can continue in-person learning. Um, 
I know Jennifer will have some more in her report to share um, as we think about some of the strategies for this upcoming year. Um, but certainly, I feel like we're very well poised to have a very successful year. And all the things we learned last year will set the stage for us to continue um, to provide our students and staff um, with the best possible environments to educate our children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Assistant Superintendent. Hi, everybody. How are you today? Um, first and foremost, I wanted to sort of reiterate the message that our theme this year is skillfully sailing into 21-22. Um, and like many sailors, I promise I won't beat the metaphor to death, but uh, like many sailors, we find that the winds change frequently. We have to adjust our sails, and this is our theme this year because it's what teachers have done all last year. They've made a lot of extensive efforts to get their students um, on board, so to speak, as well as have our families. Families have to constantly adjust to expectations and uh, requirements and mandates and whether um, their children are old enough to be vaccinated or not. Uh, families have a lot on their minds. And so what we're doing right now, um, and I'm, I'm here to report to you, is, is some of the thinking behind our planning for this year um, a lot of families are wondering about what we're planning with regard to continuation of learning if students are required to quarantine. And so I just want to reiterate that the best source of information is our district website and some of the information that goes out. Um, if you're receiving information, um, you should be, my hope is that you're able to point to it in writing somewhere on the district, you know, website. Um, if that is not the case, it, it's worth checking in uh, with us and letting us know because we want to make sure we have good information out there. So we're just asking the board and the community to sort of rely on our social media, our district website, our teaching and learning and website, our district newsletter, where you can find the information. Um, sometimes we have social media as a really great community, um, but please reach out if you have a question. Is this true um, is, a, is a great question, so we'd like to answer that. But I want to sort of let you know that our existing curricular program in all content areas will allow us to be flexible. It involves both print-based learning materials such as math, handwriting, and phonics print books for kids at the elementary level especially, um, and even at the upper levels. We do have text-based resources. Um, and our digital platforms also have video lessons and review reviews that can be assigned to students through our Google Classroom, which integrates with our Savvis platform, our, our world language learning platforms, and many of our other textbook platforms. So, um, but those are things that are, you know, in the hands of our skilled teachers who are designing lessons for students. And so we want to really have families be having success at home. So, We've talked to families. Um, Julie Church facilitated over 15 hours of family forums, and, and, and the things that we sort of have at the back of our minds is we want to make sure that we have equal access for students experiencing at-home learning if they are in quarantine, for families who have, um, are in a daycare setting, are at home with a stay-at-home family, who may be with a grandparent with limited tech capacity. We want to have options that allow for all of those families to receive, you know, high quality learning material and instruction that will provide for them to move forward with their success. Um, we want to ensure that when students are placed in quarantine, they are continuing to engage in the meaningful learning that connects and builds upon what they're going to need to know when they return to the classroom. And that's connected to our curricular program and not sort of separate and distinct. Um, we want assignments to be meaningful and not just simply um, low-level skill and drill, although there may be some practice that's required on a day-to-day -day basis with math, facts, handwriting. Um, we do also want students to have, you know, the comprehensive regular um, educational experience that links to what they're learning. Um, we also want to consider the design of a learning model that best meets the context where the student is learning. Um, so in terms of the model that we used last year, um, we did offer live stream classes for students, and that was a very um, challenging 
thing, and I can speak as, as a parent, um, in some cases it works really well if you have students that can talk to other students and do peer-to-peer -peer conversations, but it can also be very disruptive and also accessibility can be an issue for students with hearing issues, if they're having to watch students who are talking through masks. Um, it isn't designed, so if you've ever taught in a hybrid classroom, um, for those of you that are worked in a, uh, at the college level in an online class, um, it's, it's very important for learning experience to be intentionally designed for the context. So we want our students um, not to feel like they're, they're, they're a part of the class kind of in the back, but really like the learning that they're doing is moving forward. So we are engaging in this planning with our teachers and students um, to develop a plan at the elementary level that creates a success at home plan that allows students to engage in regular and predictable activities that are based on what they're doing in class, that are connected to what they're doing in class or their teacher's Google Classroom, um, as well as utilizes um, our existing curricular resources like their math book um, and the, the, the instructional videos that come along with their teacher's Google Classroom or their um, learning experience. We also have the option for some concept coaching and virtual tutoring um, that we're exploring today. So we may be proposing a success at home coordinator in future meetings just to kind of bring that to your attention so that there is a live person that our kids can connect to at home. That design is so that like I'm with a group of students that I know is at home and I'm not trying to do sort of um, you know, we want our teachers to connect with their students. Their teacher will still be connecting with students, but they may not be sort of watching in the corner while there's something else going on over here. So we wanted that design to be like, hi, in the Zoom, I'm, with, I'm here with you, um, because that, you know, it's just an intentional piece. So I'm, I'm speaking about a lot of ideas that are sometimes more easy when they're concrete. So I am, you know, happy to put something together in more detail if a curriculum workshop is requested, um, but I wanted to just sort of get out some of the thinking to alleviate some of the questions and making sure that we're all on the same page with the right information. Jen, uh, yes. So is there no option then to, especially for middle school, high school classes, to use that streaming option that we did in last year? So again, everything has a pro and a con, but if you, if you think about, you know, and I, and I don't have a definitive answer for you. Is there an option? Is there not an option? I can tell you the pros and the cons. Um, I spoke with a lot of kids who were in these live stream classes. Um, some, I, ha I had a kid who was experiencing class, you know, remotely. I think many parents would tell you that they liked the ability to know that their child, you know, was receiving instruction, but a lot of kids found it hard to follow, hard to hear. It's a, from a design perspective, it's not designed to create a robust learning experience when you're teaching people both in, I, it's even challenging to facilitate a meeting. You also have an extra barrier of the teacher being required to like let students in on a regular basis or the meeting link isn't working and the office is being called. So there can be a disruption in terms of amount of time spent navigating the live stream platform. Is there an option for like a para to run that feature? So, um, think, again, it's, these, are, these are conversations, right, that the board should have because if the para is running that feature, the para's job, you know, current position is to support and shoulder partner with students that are there. And that could be on Zoom with a kid who is on that para's caseload, um, but, you know, it's, it, it's a give and take. So the pros of live stream is that you get to see what's happening in the class. But if... I, I would commit to whatever we choose, the pro that we're looking for is students gain meaningful learning of the material. And I don't know necessarily that I have data that supports students experiencing live stream classes led to better understanding of the material that was presented in those classes. I find a virtual tutoring where I've been provided with the understanding of what is my topic in my math class today I'm able to watch and stop and pause the instructional video, and then I can meet with a tutor at a different time and talk one-on-one -on -one about the questions that I have in real time and not like wait for her to see my little hand up on the screen may 
be worth us looking into. So again, I'm not here to say definitively that Jen makes the decision. Like our families and our communities and our teachers and our administrators really have put a lot of thought into these conversations. But if live, you know, if live streaming um, is something that we decide to do, from a design perspective, the capacity that it takes to run it, to have the teacher stop, you know, there's, yeah. there's an instructional time loss when you're waiting for all the kids to join the meet, when someone's late, when you have to stop what you're doing to go let someone in or someone gets kicked out. Those kids who got kicked out deserve to be in if that's our model, but we did find that that to be the case at home. So, you know, I say not to be vague, but to say like we really struggle with these kinds of questions, but we want the answer to always be what's gonna get our kids moving forward academically. What is the best design of learning to ensure a student leaves my class with a better understanding of the causes of the American Revolution, not like just what my face looks like, right? So, so what would be our goal as a board? I'm, I'm very much interested to hear about that. Um, and again, those three things are equal access to students regardless of you know, their setting and their context at home to be able to engage in meaningful work that moves their academics forward. And we have the capacity. We have um, learning tools, instructional video, Screencastify. We have many tools that can help our teachers. Um, we have many you know, core and supplemental curricular resources that make it reasonably seamless to understand what a kid And I, I also think we have to think about the new sort of guidance and regulations that were put out. Um, most districts across the state are not offering the remote option. Um, and with the CDC making exceptions relative to the distancing um, in classrooms, so three feet instead of six feet, I think that we're gonna see a lot fewer kids in placed in quarantine um, from, from the school's perspective. And in, a, in addition to that, um, the guidance has been, you know, you're not quarantining an entire class, you're really just quarantining any individual who may be considered a close contact. And that definition now is less than three feet for more than 15 minutes in the classroom setting. Um, so, and you do not have to quarantine if you're vaccinated. Um, and in touring all the schools with RJ and looking at the setups and the structures and all this, these classrooms, we act, RJ actually had a meter, I mean a yardstick with him. Um, and we walked into classrooms and there is sufficient space to maintain that three feet. So even if you know, you're, you're more, three feet or more from the people next to you and I'm in the middle and I test positive, the two individuals on each side of me will not need to quarantine. So um, while it's hard to predict and I, you know, I don't have a, a crystal ball or a magic globe, I do think that we are going to have a lot less kids in quarantine this year than we have in the past. We will still be posting our COVID tracker, correct? Yes, correct. Melissa has been gracious enough to update that tracker. We will be providing information on a daily basis relative to positive cases and the number of students that the district places in quarantine. Uh, have, we have a meeting, Bob and I, with our school nurses on Friday. We do have our LPNs returning to our buildings. And I know probably everybody just saw Executive Order 13D, which requires all staff members to be vaccinated or at least have one of the two um, vaccine shots prior to September 27th. Um, I, I do know that there's some confusing language and um, competing thoughts on that executive order and I am anticipating some additional guidance 
relative to our responsibility as a district in collecting that information and reporting that information um, in the next 24 to 48 hours. And also the state is revising two key addendums, addendum number nine and 11 and five might be in there as well, um, that we are anxiously awaiting um, that will have additional guidance relative to quarantining and, and isolation and some other thoughts. But we are well equipped to start the school year. We have our tracker, we have our processes and protocols. Um, and um, our classrooms are looking really great in terms of maintaining that three foot distancing. Okay. Yeah, I just want to continue to remind, You're on. remind families to reach out if they have specific look for things that worked really well last year that they found helpful, um, but we wanna really make sure we're using the, the right evidence um, to put a plan in place that's designed to first and foremost promote learning. Um, not just access to teachers, you know, in the classroom. classrooms, but like what is going to make our, you know, when we design curriculum, that's what, that's what we do. I worked with a wonderful group of teachers today, and we're planning three days of awesome professional learning, really being thoughtful about the design from everything from the activity that you have kids or teachers or adults do to, you know, what kinds of questions are you putting in the chat and what, I mean, all of, whether it's virtual or online, we want to really design it in such a way that, like, has everybody uncovering their learning all the way through. And so we really want that for kids. I know there's many families that are worried about um, the pandemic and, the, you know, there's, it is a, you know, it's a separate conversation. Um, this is regarding quarantine instruction for students placed in quarantine. Um, but, you know, if there's particular things that, um, that you've heard that you're wondering if are correct, please reach out and just let me know. I think that's really important that they do that because there are things out there that I think there's some confusion. Mm -hmm. But um, I have to, I also think that given the monies and the things that you appropriate for anything that we're gonna add or not add, it's important to remember you can't prepare like for as many, it takes a long time to put all of that into play. And like you said, the pros and cons, it's awfully hard to tell how much real learning will go on for the children in front of you and the children that are at home if if you have all that live streaming it, it's well, not yeah i think you know i don't know i think it's it's important to know that we you know still believe that the the model for instruction that really it, leads to the best learning outcomes for kids is students being in person yes. and then you know we also have a curricular program that can, you know, allow for the students in quarantine to continue with those skills and pro be provided with some virtual tutoring or virtual check-ins that will still allow them a touch point. Um, and, and honestly, we found in our extended day program that that touch point one-on-one -on -one or three-on-one might have led to deeper understanding of a math content I than so. watching the lesson on the board. Right. You know, we do There's have less stress too. Yeah, yeah, we we do have access to a lot of things, and so again, it's just separating the conversation. Um, you know, whether or not you know, I think RJ and Erica and the principals have done a really wonderful job keeping our students safe and keeping our environments safe for kids to learn. Um, I know, you know, everybody's personal health matters notwithstanding, you know, we, I think they've done a wonderful job. Um, but we want to make sure that all of our kids, you know, of all abilities, of all lear learning diversities, um, are able to move forward and feel very successful in school. And we want parents to have the capacity to help and implement um, any supports that we can provide for them. So I, I very much value, I've had a lot of conversations with parents on the phone. I value those conversations. We incorporate those pieces of feedback into our planning. And I just want to reiterate that the community has been very helpful and supportive. And, you know, we are really working hard to get it with, with, a, with a wonderful team of teachers to get it right. Um, and so it may look like, you know, our success at home program might look um, like a blended uh, model more than, you know, a live, it wouldn't be a live, like the live stream model you were used to last year. Um, but we can, t we can talk more about that in a more extended session if that is, if the board is so inclined.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's move on to the approval of the meeting minutes for our regular meeting on July 27, 2021. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for July 27, 2021. Awesome. Second. Okay, any questions? If not, I'm going to ask for an aye vote. All in favor to approve the consent agenda? I mean, the approve the meeting minutes say aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Motion carries. Now we are on approval of the consent agenda, which includes purchase orders over 7,000 for the year 2021-2022, invoices for fiscal year 2020-2021 in the amount of $73,728.27, and invoices for fiscal year 21-22 in the amount of $331,556.84. Are those numbers still correct? Those numbers there are still correct. There have been any changes? Can you read that 73,000 no. no. again? I have it written. Sure, 73,700. $28.27. Must have been my dyslexia. I had 82. No, I mean, my prescription changed since these glasses okay. are just Very on good. my old bag. Thank so. you. Huh? I could have had that wrong. All right, so, so uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I make a motion to approve the purchase orders over 7,000 for 21 22 invoices and uh, for the fiscal year 20. 21 and for 21 22. Do I need to state the exact numbers again? I will. Okay. I'll second it. All right. Any questions or comments? If not, I'll ask um, for an aye vote. All in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Abstain. One abstention. Carry in. Noted. Motion carries. So that brings us to our audience of citizens portion of this evening. I'm gonna first ask if there's anyone here present this evening that would like to speak. All right, Melissa, do we have any call in viewers? Yeah. So I just wanna make, uh, just make it clear that for the next meeting, just in case anyone who's watching this back is confused, I will allow you into the actual Zoom once it's your turn to speak. Uh, so we had a couple people in the waiting room and I see that they've now left, so I'm not sure if they thought that I would admit them at that time. Is that on the agenda? It is, it yes. Is? Okay, okay. Just wanna make sure that that is written somewhere. I just wanted to clarify just in case. All right. So I have one person, Megan. And if you could just remind Megan to introduce herself and address, thanks. Megan, uh, you are now able to speak. Let me just put this. I'm not sure if she can hear. Megan, you're in the room now. I can't see your microphone, though. Okay, I'll move on to the next person. Oh, I had one person and they left. No, we had one other person and they just left. Okay. Yeah, did you want to wait I, a second or no? I did want to ensure that the public had access tonight, yeah. but no. I think there's a learning curve to this because it, it, it can be so confusing. It is. So if maybe, I don't know if they're, can they hear you if you're talking? I mean, are they, you there's, don't know? There's no one waiting anymore. Oh, um, I feel Megan bad, was it's in. So easy. I, Megan was I don't mean I, it's so easy to do. It's so yeah. easy to get knocked out is what I'm yeah, trying to yeah. say. Yeah, so I admitted her to the room, then put her back in the waiting room, and now there's nobody, so. Okay. So maybe, you know, going forward, if we do the reminder for the board meetings, mention that they can also participate remotely with a call and Zoom option, just to try to encourage more participation with the community. 
And so on the agenda, yeah, on the agenda, you know, it says uh, meetings are open to the public in person. However, if you'd like to make a comment via Zoom, you may click the link below, and the link's included. And the Zoom meeting room will be open at 7 on the night of the meeting. You'll be placed in a waiting room until the audience of the citizens portion of the meeting begins, and it's your turn to speak. And so Melissa moves them from the waiting room into the regular room where they can make their comment and then back to the waiting room and would go get the next person therefore just like someone right, would yeah. be taking turns at the podium yeah. right um so i still have megan in but i'm not able to hear her can so. you is it is it on the computer can you turn up the computer volume there's no um She just doesn't have a microphone connected. Megan, I don't know if you can hear me, but if you're wanting to speak. There's no chat on a on that Zoom. Yeah, that Zoom feature. Yeah. Sure, you, you just sure. need to go to the podium and put your name and address down. Press the button. Okay. Yes. Hi, my name is Bilden Francis. Um, in the uh, in your I, I, for, I forgot your name. I'm sorry. Jennifer. Jennifer. In your opening statement, you 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 said something I'm, earlier. I'm sorry. Could you just state your address? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Sylvan Hills. I live on 96 Sylvan Hills Road, East Haven. Um, one of the things you mentioned in your statement was in regards to um, the quarantine. And correct me if I'm wrong. Or maybe I misunderstood what you said earlier, but. Um, it seems to me that there's no clear plan at this moment for you know whether or not a kid needs to be quarantined and, and be at home for a certain period of time if they come in as you know contact with someone who has COVID. Is, is that is that did I get that correctly? That there's no clear cut plan at the moment in terms of um, quarantining and have a, a way of you know the kid still being a part you know being able to participate in some type of on learning while they're quarantining. Did I? So right now. The, if the district places your child in quarantine, Jennifer has organized um, a combination of personalized, and correct me if I'm wrong, personalized learning software, access to their, their textbooks and their math books, um, as well as touch points with a tutor. Um, kids who are placed in quarantine could be out for a matter of three to eight days. So depending on when you get put into quarantine, the circumstances of your quarantine, um, there's a variation in, in terms of timeline there. And during that time, um, students are allowed to get credit as well as be marked present for the day. If they're completing the, the tasks and the combination of work that Jennifer was speaking about in her presentation. So there'll, there'll be- we, We're asking for additional um, or we're, we're proposing some additional things that are st still in the works in terms of uh, virtual support for teachers to be able to do connecting and mentoring with students who are at home. Okay, um, so, so there are some components of the plan that we're looking to add and enhance our cur current as success needed, though, program. right? Because if as you needed. get, you know, yeah. the chances of many people probably being quarantined might be different this year. So I see why you're hesitating is that why you know oh uh, well we just have to post for a position i mean that requires you know yeah, that i just want to remind everyone that it's um audience of citizens oh, thank oh you. We should sorry be. i forgot yes. too thank you so okay. sorry. but it's possible that multiple kids could be in quarantine isn't it not yes so aren't we shouldn't could, we be prepared have, oh. for the worst you can and to ensure that our kids continue to feel like they're a part of the learning community you know, the classroom, so to speak, and have some type of connection with their teacher or? Yeah, and I, it sounds like you have a lot of thoughts on this, so, and, and I know typically in our audience of citizens, we make our comments, but I recommend if you'd like to chat after the meeting, please let me know. Okay. Board, can you just reiterate that, the, the parameters around public comments so that he? Yes, um, the public is, 
you know, invited to speak to on any item that is under the board's jurisdiction. However, there usually is not any type of um, conversation discussion. or discussion pertaining to such unless it's to clarify false information. I apologize. I got roped into. Thank you. No, no I do. I apologize. We wanna, because we want to engage in conversation yeah. and we want to explain Clarify. and help and yeah. we also want to hear perspectives from parents. It's just so policy. it just makes it difficult for us when we're sitting here. But if you think about it, it was yeah. clarification. Yeah. Too. No, it is. Because it is. there is a plan. But like you we said, do. we and need to follow we are up. We yeah. to add you know, different pieces of the puzzle. Okay. So should I try one more time? Sure. Okay. See if we get Megan back. I'm on. Um, so we're about to wrap up the audience of citizens. I just wanted to give you one more chance, Megan, if you were able to come on. No. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. And let's move on to 7.1. 7.1. Discussion and possible action on the approval of the bilingual parent educator personal contract as discussed earlier this evening I, at this point since it was discussed i'm going to ask for a motion i make a motion to approve the bilingual parent educator personal contract second, second. Oh. sorry a jen. double all right jen and tia <laughs> right together too <laughs> Um, I am going to ask if there's any questions or comments now that we do have a motion on the floor. Okay. If, if not, I'm going to ask for an I vote. To all in favor to approve the appointment of the bilingual parent educators, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. One abstention. Mary Ann, motion carries. 7.2, discussion and possible action on the approval of the preschool teacher personal contracts as discussed in subcommittee. So at this time, I am just gonna ask for a motion. I make a motion to approve the preschool teacher personal contracts. Second. Thank you, Jack. Does anybody have any questions or comments on the contracts as discussed earlier? Okay, if not, I am going to ask for an aye vote. All in favor to approve the preschool teacher personal contract, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. One abstain I want from Ms. Pellegrino. I want to clarify that it's not that I disagree with anything, it's that I'm unclear as to my legal status. Are you still living in town? Yes, but I'm registered to vote in Woodbridge. But I don't think that might, you're still living there. Right. Yeah, well, all right. We'll but you're just, trying yeah, to, just, yeah. okay. Thank you I, for that, though. Yes, thank you for making it a little so bit So happy that she's here, us. though. Yeah. Okay. Um, discussion and possible action on the approval of East David Administrator Supervisors MOU, as discussed in subcommittee. I make a motion to approve the East Haven Administrators and Supervisors MOU. Second. All right. So at, at this time, I'm as you know, this was discussed in executive session. So I will ask now that the motion is on the floor, if there's any questions or comments in regard to the MOU. Yeah, I, I'd just like to make a comment um, that I originally made a statement as being mm -hmm. opposed. That was it. Oh. At this time, I've, I've um, had an opportunity to peruse it. And uh, so when we do make the vote, I make it known that uh, why I'm making a change. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? Nope. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and ask all in favor to approve the East Haven Administrators and Supervisors MOU. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Abstain? Abstain. One abstention, one. Is it opposition or opposed? Opposition. Opposed. opposition. It's, opposition. it's the right? same thing. Yeah. It's opposed. Yeah. I don't know if there's a technical, more technical term. All right. This brings us to 7.4, discussion and possible action on the approval of the East Haven Administrators and Supervisors Association contract. And j just for you know transparency reasons, as you know, I sent everybody an email because they're 
the information was not loaded till Monday, and that's because that was the board attorney. The board attorney getting information, and as our policy states, that all meeting materials will be made available as soon as possible, um, which on Monday um, late, late morning is when it became possible, finalized by the attorneys. So hopefully everyone had a chance to review. And so this time I'll ask for a motion. I make a motion to approve the East Haven Administrators and Supervisor Association contract. I second that. Any questions or comments? The only comment I would make is that I think it's imperative that this gets done as quickly as possible. And it, it is most beneficial uh, to the education process and to the students of East Haven. Thank you, Jack. Yep. I agree, Jack. Any other? No? If not, at this time for 7.4, I will ask for an I vote on the approval of the East Haven Administrators and Supervisors Association contract. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Two abstentions? From Ms. DeLongo and Ms. Pellegrino. That brings, motion carries, that brings us to 7.5, discussion and possible action on the approval of the Rotary T sponsorship as discussed in subcommittee. And either Erica, I'm sure, can tell us a little bit more about that if they'd like, if any, or if anybody has any questions. If not, since it was uh, earlier discussed, I'm open to someone making a motion. I would make the recommendation that the board engages as an Eagle sponsor for the East Haven Rotary. Um, so that increases golf our, ball drop in the amount of five hundred dollars. Okay. So I make a motion to approve the Rotary T sponsorship in the amount of five hundred dollars. Eagle what? Eagle sponsor. Eagle, Eagle sponsor. sponsor. Okay. Jen second. Okay. So at this time, I'm going to ask for any questions or comments. All right. If not, I'm going to ask for an aye vote. All in favor to approve the $500 Rotary T sponsorship, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? I'm going to abstain as a Rotary member. Two abstentions. That brings us to discussion and possible action on the approval of the Reefs Across America donation, which, as we discussed in subcommittee, is really an honor for the community. Am I correct with that, Jack? Yep. Okay. Very much so. Yep. <laughs> yep. There yep. you heard it. Uh, so at this time, does, would anyone like to make a motion? Oh, I have a recommendation. I'm not, I mean, as long as the majority, I, I mean, I recommend as a, um, as a corporate sponsor, at minimum, we would be a major. If, if we're going to participate as a, as a district, I, I would say at minimum. Motion first. Oh, I thought we were, oh, I'm sorry. I make a motion to approve Wreaths Across America donation. Second. Second. Okay. Discussion on the donation? I make a motion, I mean, make a recommendation. Yes. <laughs> to be at minimum um, of a major, which is $600. Okay. If anyone would like to. Questions, comments? We, we, we have that funding. Okay. Stuff, right? All, all, <laughs> all in favor to approve the Reese Across America donation as, what is it? Major. major. As major sponsors. sponsors. Corporate, major, major corporate, corporate sponsors. sponsors. Um, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? I'm going to abstain from that one. Okay. We have uh, Mr. Stacy and Mrs. Pellegrino abstaining, which brings us to discussion and possible action on the approval of the candidate for the finance manager position as discussed in subcommittee. And this would be to fill, um, I know it's a new title, but it's really to fill Ms. Bovera's job, who is no longer with the district. Did anyone have any clarification questions before I ask for a motion? No. If not, that I will ask for a motion at this time. I make a motion to approve the finance manager's position. I'll second. 
Well, approve the candidate. Approve the candidate. Do I need to state his name? His name is Joe Rossi, if you'd like to add it. Joe Rossi. To approve Joe Rossi. To approve Joe Rossi. There you go. Do Thank you. Second? Richard. Second. Jen? Yes. Okay. All right, so at this time, any questions or comments? If not, I'm going to ask for an I vote to approve Joe Rossi as our new finance manager. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Ms. Pellegrino abstains. Motion carries. Welcome, Mr. Rossi, in case you do this. Okay. Oh. All right. 7.8, discussion and possible action on the approval of the All-American Contract Addendum. As noted in subcommittee, this is to extend our sanitation workers at each school. I believe we are gonna move ahead with just one, right? At each right. school between the hours of 10 and three. Am I correct? And this is grant funded. So even though it does, I guess the contract does need to be, yeah. Yeah, approved. just not, right. yeah. Okay, so, so any, Clarification make, questions? If not, I'll ask for a motion. I make a motion to approve the All-American Contract Addendum. Second. Any questions or comments? If not, I'm gonna ask for an all in favor vote of aye. All in favor to approve All-American Contract Addendum? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It's about green up. <laughs> motion carries. That brings us to 7.9, discussion and possible action on the hires, rehires, and stipends um, as loaded to the drive and discussed earlier. Is there any clarification questions? Otherwise, I'm gonna ask for a motion. I have a clarification question. I do. Um, on um, band advisor A, it's split. Um, Same. Individual listed, I thought resigned. Correct. Okay. He, he completed the summer band camp in sure. time for us to be able to start so the students could have experience this summer while we found a replacement. So that was oh. prorated for the portion of time when he worked this summer. Okay, thank you. And for clarification, um, the new hire for band has taken on the role as the, um, the marching band? Yes. Oh, great. Excellent. Okay. So, so effective, this the start date that that stipend is prorated for the duration of the year when he will continue to work with the marching band. Um, and we're very excited. He's a very talented individual. Is that who's practicing? This, who's practicing this evening? Oh, yeah. wow. I that's oh, awesome. awesome. I'm glad. Was the band nice happy? And because I know at our last meeting, you know, we spoke and you know we told them, you know, we were confident we were going to find a great candidate. Is it still? Um, any change is always challenging, but yeah, I think absolutely. he'll serve the community. I um, also had a question. Um, for the, I know the high school basketball coach is not listed. However, for the um, JMMS cross country, I know that the actual sports don't overlap. Training purposes, those don't overlap for two head coach positions? Um, can you ask your yeah. question again? So, our head coach for high school basketball. Girls basketball. Girls basketball. Yep. And then JMMS cross country, now head coach, are, one in the are going to be the same. Two different country. seasons. Two different seasons. Cross cross right, but that's what I'm saying. It's going to be, there's no, tra that's what I'm asking. There's no training overlap? No. no. The middle okay. school is typically a shorter season. Okay, that, that was my question. Yeah. No training overlap. Gotcha. One In, question about the, the band. Is it still co-op? Is it still it a co-op? It is. It is. Okay. Correct. Oh, good. So it worked out for yep. the first one. Okay. Even though, good. okay, good. All my question. Yep. All right. I have a motion. A motion to approve um, hires, rehires, and stipends. Okay. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, at this time. Um, Comment. If there's any questions or comments. Comment. Comment. Uh, for the purpose of disclosure, I'd like to make it note that uh, I have a family member on the stipend list. Um, I was advised that this individual was the sole applicant and so therefore it didn't really matter. So I will be voting on this. Okay. All right, thank you, Jack. All right, so at this time, are there any other questions or comments? If not, I'm gonna go ahead and ask for an I vote. Um, all in favor to approve the list of hires, rehires, and stipends, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Ms. Pellegrino. Motion carries. 
We have 7.10, discussion of possible action on the approval of the Ferrara items for discard as provided to the board. I believe it's mostly textbooks. And, and you may see some repeats. Some of the items were approved for discard at our June meeting in 2019, and I think they just unearthed as different individuals may have retired or different, I don't know why, but um, some of them have been previously approved for discard, but there was a mix of items on them. No clarification on for emotions. Yeah, they're, they're all, they're all uh, obsolete materials that were, um, you know, damaged or, or no longer able so there, to be used. So there's continuous. nothing that can be salvaged and reused at a third world country or something. Yeah, we, we do, you know, especially a large number of the books, we, we tried to be very judicious about recycling wherever possible and providing it to, but even to donate, you know, they require the board. Mm -hmm. Approval for discard. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve the Ferrara items to be discarded. Second. Second. <laughs> All right. So, at this time, any other questions or comments about the dis items listed for discard at Ferrara? Okay. If not, I'm going to ask for an I vote to approve. All in favor to approve the Ferrara items for discard, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Ms. Pellegrino? Motion carries. We have 7.11, discussion of possible action on the approval of the waiver for the bid requirement related to the CT manufacturing equipment. I don't believe we really actually, we will vote on this, but I don't believe is the waiver necessary. It's because a proprietary it's as well as grant funded. So it's not usually something the board would vote on, but I think in the spirit of transparency from the business department, it is added to the agenda this evening. Correct. Makes sense. Anything you'd like to add? No, this is piggybacking off the presentation we received mm -hmm. um, from our, prin our principals of the high school earlier tonight in, in conjunction with the discussion we had in finance about um, waiving the bid requirements so we can order, these, order our machines to make sure they are here in time. It is from one vendor, so the bid process will only add cost plus delay the implementation of our program. In light of the total amount, which is over $200,000, um, and in seeking, you know, board support and approval um, for the equipment um, to magnify the importance of the program, we would appreciate if the board would approve it this evening. Yeah, no, I think every, I know absolutely. I'm in favor of this it's also program. Under I think grants, everyone right? it's going to be a really good thing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And if we wait, it'll be. The a chips. Long time. Yeah. The chips. Long time. The chips. The chips. All right, so this time I'm going to ask for a motion. I make a motion to waive the bid requirement related to the CTE manufacturing equipment. All right, second. Thank you, Jen. Any questions or comments? If not, at this time, I ask for an I vote to approve the waiver for the bid requirement related to the CTE manufacturing equipment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Ms. Pellegrino? Motion carries. Um, that brings us to 7.12, discussion and possible action on the BOE receiving um, monthly assessment reports for math and ELA achievement progress for the East Haven School District grades 3, 5, and 7. And again, this is for discussion, but I believe it's something we probably want to discuss a lot further and is in a workshop mm -hmm. um, to really see even if something like a monthly report is even feasible. I, it's uh, just to, I think, make sure the board, you know, is able to um, keep its pulse on the academic achievement throughout the district and those pivotal grade points. So. I, I, I would like to not put this on the agenda and approve it. Well, it's on the agenda. We just don't have to approve it. It's there. Well, no, you have to add to no, the point. it's on oh. the agenda. Okay. It, it, it's on the agenda. There was a revised. There was a revised. Oh, that's version. right. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. No, okay. I didn't so get that one. <laughs> again, it's not. It's discussion. Yeah. Um, on how we're going to do this, something. It's. I think it's just a conversation that needs to be introduced. Um, yeah. Do you want to hold a curriculum workshop where Jen can present a little bit more about performance matters and how we can use that system to provide a monthly report and 
you know, I don't know, at, the, at that time we could discuss whether you want that to be a formal monthly report or something that the board has access to, like a spreadsheet or a report that's posted similar to the enrollment tracking form that yeah. I'm gonna share with you tomorrow. I, I think that makes more sense. And then just maybe like a quarterly presentation when you actually have an update sure. um, for yeah. us with, you know, with information. I think this is just so board members know yeah. and have access to that sure. information. And we can and have discussions yeah. at some point. Exactly. Yeah, right. It's we a have good to start idea. Figuring out, you know, points on whether. So prior to our next yeah. board meeting, do you want to have a curriculum workshop? Yes. Okay. Yes. I just want to say I think that's going to be very helpful compared to things that we implemented as far as new policies and especially with the increase in the time of schools. I think it'll be good for everybody to know. Well, yeah, I think we talked about when we decided to in increase the time, we wanted to know how we're going to measure it, yep. if it's, you know, I don't know, if lack of better word, paying off, I guess, for, sure. the, for the time. Um, if if, if the strategy is yeah. being used, yeah. show progress. Yes, yeah. exactly. So that, that'll can, work. Can I also? And we could do that remotely, can't we, the workshop, yeah. if, if we're, depending on everybody's schedule or anyone could join remotely? Um, the curriculum workshop? Yeah, anybody could join remotely, right? Um, I, I would like to have if we oh, do we it in person we have to let everyone join in oh. if they want to Should what I've done, done in the past board members yeah oh yeah and oh. Jennifer could also run it through a curriculum curriculum advisory council what I generally do is we have it in person and then I screencast mm -hmm. where yeah. I make comments and show the slides and then our you know deeper discussion is captured in minutes just so it's for Did people who want to just watch quick and get the pulse on what's going on. They can see the meat and potatoes, and then they can, you know. I just know the new statute as of July 1st, every board member has to have the option to participate virtually in any oh. meeting, if, if they so choose, Yep. until um, further notice. Sure. So um, yeah, the, the capacity to look at data will be, you know, with many of our, the performance matters will be much easier to sort of pull together reports at your convenience, you know, mm -hmm. provided the data has, you know, is within the assessment window, which we have posted in our assessment framework. Okay. Yeah. Like, this is the benchmarking too. Like, yep. I'd like to talk about that there. too. Yep. So. All right. So as we know, we'll set up something. Jen, Think of some dates that you're available and would sure. be ready, and you know, absolutely. I'm sure many of us can accommodate your your time. Yes. All right. So uh, at this time, I'm going to uh, mention discussion concerning future agenda items. As always, I encourage you to both email myself and the superintendent to go over items. Did you have something else to add? I would really like to have a policy subcommittee meeting oh, yes, between yes. now and our next meeting because I'd like to bring forth the COVID policies that ended in June and reestablish those for 2021-22 in accordance with the new guidance that I'm anticipating. So it would be beneficial to pick a date now if, if yeah. everybody has their calendars and we can do oh, that. Sure. That'd and be fine. can I just throw in there that some of these policies or this um, stipulations from the state are still coming in, correct? Yeah. yeah. And they're going to continue to change. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Thanks. Um, yeah. in, in person or virtual, are we doing the policy subcommittee? I, I, I well, I, it could be either actually. So it's. But but when you plan for virtual, I think we should plan for incoming. Yeah. And then if you you know people you can come, come virtual, virtual, they can yeah. come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Otherwise, it's gonna everything just you know it becomes haphazard. If we could do the seventh, I okay. know Tuesdays generally work for everybody, but right. that's a week before our regular meeting. So That's we can do a subcommittee, and then whatever we decide on, we can put on the agenda. I thought the seventh is your first day of school. No, it's not no, oh. the thirty-first is. Next. Tuesday. We would have one week under our belt. It is. Oh, it's I apologize. We'll be ready for summer vacation by then. <laughs> <laughs> huh? It is Rosh Hashanah, but I'm pretty sure everyone's going to be okay. Yeah. It is Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. Rosh Hashanah. I generally prefer not to do, uh, you know, things on I Rosh Hashanah have a if that's. With the Okay. Okay. Uh, Wednesday work for anyone? Does Wednesday, Wednesday the eighth is fine with me. Works for me. Okay. Wednesday the eighth it is. All right. What time? Six. Not oh. five. Five thirty. Yeah, five thirty, please. Okay. These five o'clocks are a little. 
Hike, guys. Yeah. Hear from and we'll be able to I'm with you. 530. Remotely access? Yeah. I have if, to any meeting a board member wants to attend remotely, they have okay. to be allowed to. Okay. Okay. So September 8th at 5.30 p.m. And At least note, the pandemic thing is lifted or, or whatever. Just to note that the ninth is the policy. Merit Award Dinner. You're all invited. Buy a ticket. <laughs> what is that? Merit, Merit, Award, Award. Award. The Merit Award Dinner is oh. a kickoff to the Fall so, Festival, which will be the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th. Where is that? And It'll be at few, Seasons. We have a few students. Uh, student recipients. Do yes, we not Nina, oh. Nina Moreros is the student oh, yes. who's being um, yes. recognized. and. Erica, do you know what's what's uh, that guy on the truck? To Toby, Tori. Tori. Tori Tito is being recognized. Right is that at seven? There. Seven? As a six? Um, yeah, I believe it's six o'clock. Yeah, cocktail. Six, six o'clock at Seasons. Yes. Okay. All right, Tia, did you have something? Um, I wanted to um, ask about. I know you're going to come up with it tomorrow, but um, a chance to talk or at least discuss, you know, look at the enrollment together as a team. And I know that I sent you that as a question, but just to talk about it at another meeting too, as we get moving. Schools are yeah. actually, they are still coming in with new enrollments. Yeah. Lots of, yeah. lots of like movement as this of today week. Too. In and out. It's always fluid, right? Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Like even new students. Um, so. I have the enrollment tracking sheet all set to go. I just asked principals to look it over for me just to make sure that there was an additional set of eyes. And then again, we'll update it weekly. So I will share that with you most likely by the end of the day tomorrow. So you'll have a couple weeks uh, looking at it before our next meeting. Okay, and look perfect. at all the changes, right? All right, sounds good. Thank perfect. you. You're welcome. So I remind everyone that we will be having a special meeting on Wednesday, September 8th. Our next regular. Wait, it's a special meeting or? Um, no, I'm sorry, a workshop. A workshop yeah. or Policy Wait, subcommittee. Subcommittee, Policy subcommittee meeting. Subcommittee. We don't know the date of the workshop yet. Subcommittee meeting on the 8th and our next regular meeting is September 14th. Uh, we have a 630 for finance buildings and grounds and we have our regular meeting at 7. However, um, I ask that uh, subcommittee chairs, if you would like to have a meeting, to make sure you let us know at least a week prior What's for scheduling. Date? I'm sorry. Um, the 14th. Okay. Well, you're going to have yours on the 8th. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to adjourn. I second. I second.